is this item selling for more than my bottom dollar, which is $6? Yeah, if you see this, that one's like almost 40 bucks. This one for 12, $175, okay. Yeah, I would. I think it's safe to say this one is selling for more than our bottom dollar. Welcome to Products Got Talent, the show for budding eBay resellers, where your new and used items audition for a chance to become listed on your resale room shelves and eBay store. I'm your host, Michael Masters. I put together this game to train your mind to recognize the most profitable items to sell on eBay. I'm also pretty excited to share this extremely valuable worksheet with you. I call it the Product Profitability Worksheet. The purpose of this resource is to walk you through my process of sourcing items to sell on eBay. I've taken years of lessons that I've learned and placed them into a step-by-step -step worksheet that is designed to train you to judge the profitability of your own items. Go ahead and download the product profitability worksheet for yourself by clicking the link in the description. All right, here we are at Products Got Talent round one, supply and demand. This is where we'll find out how much of these four products are available and the desire of people to buy the item. Okay, so our first item is this Wilton candy melting pot. It's my girlfriend's. She knew I needed to find some items around the home to sell. And she said, well, you know what? I'm not using this. Why don't you go ahead and sell this? So I'm gonna pull out my worksheet and I'm gonna write down the name of the item, Wilton Candy Melting Pot. And for the status, I'm going to put used. Underneath that is flaws. This thing is in really good shape. Um, it's just the box itself has some wear to it. I'm just gonna put box normal wear. Okay, now let's open up eBay and we're going to search for it. And there it is. Um, I want you to notice something here. The pricing for each of these listings is black in color. These are live listings that are selling right now, that are for sale right now. We're gonna to wanna to look at items that have already sold. And the way we do that is we scroll down to sold listings, which is here on the left-hand side, down here you see sold listings. And that's gonna repopulate, and you'll see that the pricing has turned green. That's how you know you're looking at the sold listings. Our first question under sales history is how many comps do we have? And so we're going to find the exact product that we have, which on this in this very top, this is the one we have. And there's one, there's another one, here's another one uh, without a box. Here's one here, here's another one. So there's quite a few of these. And so that answers the first question for us. How many comps? We're going to check many, and that is worth three points. Okay, now we need to look for the number of recently sold items. And the, the sell date is right here above the name of the product. So the most recently sold was April 2nd, which was yesterday. Okay, so we scroll down to find another one that's that we have here. Another one sold yesterday. That looks different than ours. This one sold two days ago, two days ago. And so these are selling fairly quickly. And so for recently sold, if you look, we have a little thermometer down there, which says cold. That's for listings that have sold every month or more. We have warm for items that have sold every one to three weeks-ish. We have hot for uh, items that have sold every day to seven days. This is obviously a hot item. We're gonna click that. If you go down a little bit more on the sheet, you see demand score, and we get this score by adding those two numbers that we just gave our product. So three plus three is six, and that tells us our item is in high demand, which is a very good thing. Um, and then go down a little further, we see decision time. This is where we make the choice to send our item to round two or not. And I think it is pretty obvious what our choice is. The candy melting pot is going to round two. Okay, our second item is this Greenfield Village Pottery Jug. First, let's open up our sheet under item two. We're gonna put Greenfield Village Pottery. The status, this is also a used item. and. It's in very good shape, so I'm gonna put none for flaws. Okay, now let's go to eBay. Under the name, we're going to put Greenfield Village Pottery. We're looking for how many comps? 
between none, a few, or many. And we don't have any of these that are that have been sold. Um, so there's really no listings there. So we're going to put none for comps. Now recently sold, obviously since there's no comps, there's not gonna be any recently sold. And so we're gonna put cold for that. All right, so that's not looking good for the pottery jug. And as we go down, we look for the score one plus one, it gives us a two and what it says here is donate or gamble and next to gamble if you see the little asterisk there um, that gets you to the bottom of that of that box that says exception one of a kind or limited supply items and it just so happens that this item itself here it's a custom item made by hand in greenfield village in dearborn michigan and the way that you can tell that is by you know, as you're scrolling through here, you see Greenfield Village Pottery. And here's here's a bowl that just sold today. And it's got a unique design for it. But you don't see any other of those, right? Um, there's all these other Greenfield Village Pottery items. You can tell this is like custom pottery. And for that reason, you're not going to have a lot of comps. It wouldn't be fair for us to not give this jug a chance because it is a one-of-a-kind piece. So for that reason and that reason alone, we're gonna make an exception and we're gonna send it to round two. Okay, our third item is this McDonald's Happy Meal toy from the Wizard of Oz. It's a Madam Alexander toy. Again, we'll go to our worksheet and fill that information in. And the status is new since it's still in its packaging. Um, the package itself has some kind of normal wear to it. So I'm just gonna make a note, flaws, package, normal wear. We'll go back to eBay here, and then I'm gonna search for Madame Alexander Tin Man Happy Meal. This is a strange packaging for it, but it looks like the same product. Um, and there's, there's quite a few of these. So for for a number of comps, we're gonna say many. Now, the recently sold, let's look those up. We have one April 1st, March 22nd, March 6th, March 6th, February 20th. So at least every week or so. So we're gonna call this warm. And then we're gonna add up those points. Two plus three is five. And that means our Madam Alexander Tin Man has a, is a reasonable demand. Okay, so we can push it on to round number two. Congratulations, Tin Man. Let's meet our fourth contestant. Okay, this is the Ninja Fit Blender. Now, this item we had, <laughs> my girlfriend and I, we both had these blenders, these really small blenders that we use for smoothies. And for some reason, we just held onto to both of these. And, and so the Ninja Fit was the one we decided to to sell. I'm gonna go to my worksheet and put that down. Ninja Fit Blender. The status is obviously used. I'm gonna write normal wear under flaws. It's been used quite a bit. The motor's still good on it. Everything works. It's just got some regular wear to it. So we're gonna write that down. Now let's go to eBay and in my search bar, type in Ninja Fit Blender. So now if you see here, they have, looks like they have a lot of these brand new open box and pre-owned stuff. So I'm gonna make this a little easier by clicking condition up here and select used because we want to only be looking at the used ones because that's what we have, okay? So our the number of comps that we have for our used one is well, there's the base for the one that we have. This other one is a different model. There's another base. I don't see any complete units. Here's a complete kind of unit here. Um, that's pre-owned. Here's another one. Okay, so there's a few of these. We're going to mark a few in how many comps. We'll look at those ones that we just spotted here to find out how recently they were sold. This one was sold on February 23rd couple months ago uh, February 12th February 1st January 8th okay um, that's a cold item which does not usually look very good 
So if we add those up, we got two plus three. That puts our item as a dust collector. And ordinarily, if this was something that you spotted at a Goodwill or garage sale or something, you might reconsider purchasing it unless unless you were buying this thing for dirt cheap. I'm, I'm probably gonna make an exception for this because these are a fairly high dollar items. $25.99 for that one, $49.99, someone accepted a best offer, so it was probably 25, 30 bucks, $45. Okay, now think of what we spent on this on this blender. We literally just pulled it out of our kitchen, so there's no out-of-pocket costs for it. I think it's safe for us to uh, say that um, we're gonna move that onto round two as well. Okay, welcome to round two of Product Scott Talent, where we will look at our qualifying items to see if they are profitable enough to become listed on your resale room shelves and eBay store. Okay, first thing we have to decide on a number I call the bottom dollar. What is that? Well, when you're outsourcing, it's very easy to load up your shopping cart with items I call duds that have very small profit margins. Every item you pick up must be photographed, listed, and stored in your resale room. All of this requires your valuable time and shelf space. On top of that, for every item we sell, we have to pay the appropriate fees and shipping costs. But don't get too bogged down by this stuff at this point. Right now, for those starting out, I suggest a bottom dollar amount of $6. That's $5 profit, but it leaves us a little bit extra for selling fees, which are generally somewhere around 13%. Okay, let's go back to our Wilton candy melting pot. We're looking to answer the question, are the items selling for more or less than your bottom dollar on average? And you, you don't have to pull out a calculator here. You can sort of do this um, just by looking. Is this item selling for more than my bottom dollar, which is $6? Yeah, if you see this, that one's like almost 40 bucks. This one for 12, $175, okay. Yeah, I would. I think it's safe to say this one is selling for more than our bottom dollar. And then the shipping trend. Are the majority of buyers getting free shipping for this item? Let's check that out. This one, buyers paying shipping. This one's free shipping. This one's free shipping. The buyers paying this one, free shipping. Buyer pays, free shipping. Okay, so we, we have kind of a mix of these here. So we're gonna put mixed for that answer, which gives us one point. So if we add those up, two plus one is three. That means we have some potential for profit. And then if we go down a little bit more, we can reasonably determine based on the profitability of this product that this product has talent. Okay, let's go to our next item, which is the Greenfield Village Pottery. All right, so like we determined before, we don't have any comps for this pottery jug, but we determined that since it was a one-of-a-kind item, we were gonna keep it in the running. Now, we go through some of these other Greenfield Village Pottery items. We see that they're selling for around 20 bucks or so each, 15 to 20 bucks, and some of them even more than that. So we are well above our bottom dollar amount. So there's two points right there. Now the shipping trend, it looks like for the majority of these, the shipping is paid for by the buyer. My guess for that is because, um, because it's kind of a heavier and more fragile item. So the shipping is gonna be a little bit more. So they're putting that on the buyer. We're gonna click no, buyer pays shipping. Add those two up, we got two plus two is four. And it turns out that the pottery jug is a high profitability item and so, Greenfield Pottery Jug, welcome to the resale room. Okay, on to our third item, the Madame Alexander Tin Man Happy Meal toy. First thing we're looking for is, is my item selling for less than, equal to, or more than the bottom dollar? And right up here we have one that was sold for more than. This one's way less than. Um, it looks like the majority of these are selling for less than our $6 bottom dollar. That is not a good sign. It'll probably end up costing us after shipping to <laughs> get this product to our customers. We're going to say less than, and if you can tell on the worksheet it says less than means it's game over for this product. I'm sorry, Tin Man. It's time to pack up your bags and go home. Oh. 
Last, our last item of the day is the Ninja Fit Blender. Our question again becomes, is this item selling for more, less than, or equal to our bottom dollar? And if you look, the base of these are selling more than bottom dollar. This package here, well above. This one, well above. So we're gonna say more than. It's just gonna give us two points. Are the majority of buyers getting free shipping? Well, let's have a look at that. $25.99, the buyer pays the shipping there. This one, they offered free shipping. This one, they offered free shipping. The buyer paid here, and the buyer paid here. Okay, so we have a mix, and so that's one point, and two plus one is three. This item has potential for profit. So, Ninja Fit Blender, you have got talent, and welcome to the resale room. Congratulations. By now you know that you've got a number of items that are in demand, that people are actively looking to buy, and that every item you have is profitable and worthy of placing on the shelves of your resale room. Now here's how you can get started sourcing your own items. First, click that link in the description to download your product profitability worksheet. Next, just look around your home for some things you think you can sell. To make it easy, start with small to medium sized items. One last thing, I'm wrapping up my long awaited eBay training webinars. If you wanna stay on top of that, you're invited to my Resale Room Facebook group. Link to that is in the description as well. Okay, go ahead and get your worksheet and start sourcing.